You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin, except no sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, prior to the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union, its satellite state called East Germany, there was a thing where uh, Germans behind the Iron Curtain would do something called voting with their feet, namely trying to get across the wall and defect to the West. Well, tonight, dear listeners, Millwall fans have voted with their feet. The den is sparse for the visit of table-topping Leicester City. Um, it's an unchanged Millwall side, unbelievably, from Saturday. In goal, therefore, uh, Martia Sarkic got a back line of Danny Mack replacing the um, Murray Wallace, a slight one change I suppose. Jake Cooper and uh, Tanganga in the middle on the right, Ryan Leonard. In front of them, Billy Mitchell and Joel Saville. The front three will be George Honeyman, Zian Fleming and uh, Ryan Honeyman up front. Michael Oberfemi, um, sparse as I say, I mean there's lots and lots of empty seats in here tonight. There's probably a comment on both the performances of the last two games, that poor defeat at Rotherham on Easter Monday, and the debacle at Huddersfield on Saturday. Both teams are on the pitch, as you can gather, by the uh, Lamb Come Play Mill in their familiar dark room, white, less than a bizarre yellow, orange, and white ensemble. Listeners, I'm reminded of General Melchett in Blackadder, who um, in one of the scenes says to Captain Blackadder about the, the same tactics being used on the Western Front, that the enemy won't expect it the 19th time, having tried and failed 18 times already, straight into the machine guns. Um, I did read a post earlier on, I don't have it to hand. Someone said we'll either win it, scrap, fight and bollock our way to a 1-0 tonight, or we'll get slaughtered 4-0. Real um, dispiriting sight around the den at the moment. But who can blame? You know, I don't blame people for staying away. So live on Sky TV, there's absolutely zero enticement to come down here. And uh, we can talk to the cows, come home about the, um, the various options available to Neil Harris. But this squad looks threadbare. Sitting on the bench tonight, Bob Bielkowski, Sean Hutchinson, Tom Bradshaw returns to the bench at least, Adam Mayor, Brooke Norton Cuffey, uh, Adamo Marku, Casper Denor, Roman S.A. and Wes Harding. Attractive players on the bench. A functional workhorse outfit starts. You can imagine the torrent of criticism there is online. Speaking after Saturday's debacle, Neil Harris said some of the players in this starting level need to do a bit more. He's got a group of players, the majority of them who care, strange choice of words, and some need to do more, he says. I've got, he's got to be honest. This is a mark of respect. I'm going to gather this is for Dave Mehmet, who sadly passed away today. I think it's a minute's silence. It's been turned into a round of applause, rightly so. Absolutely no announcement as to what that's all about. Poorly done, Mill. Youth player in the 70s, broke into the first team, I remember it well. Really strong, attractive player, got injured, moved on to places like uh, Charlton and Gillingham. Arguably never fulfilled his plan, but really, really well thought of. I've seen lots of tributes from non-league sides he was involved in locally. Fisher, Beckenham Town, um, Glebe, I think I saw. RIP Dave Mehmet, seems uh, a different era. What's, the, what's going on here? Put the music back on. We're ready to kick off. Jules Savile will get us underway against table topping Leicester City with their Premier League parachute payments, etc. etc. Mr. Buy for now can't find the off button. At last. Away we go. Early push in the bank, early free kick, Mill Wall just on the right side of the centre of the D. Anyone not averse to Millwall, um, you know, life would not know that. I'm, st I'm still gathering it was for Dave Mehmet that minute silence. What a, what a poor show. Anyway, George Honeyman to take this right-sided free kick. And floats it in into the middle. There's Ryan Longman header on target. The goalkeeper takes. Simply enough. Nice to see a set piece come off with a shot on target. 
You know, since the spring, the cricket season started, listeners, I'm at that stage in the season. I said on the last show, I'm bored of it all now. We've managed to pluck a relegation struggle from the jaws of lower, lower level mediocrity. Very Millwall. Mill, Millwallness. Yeah, some harsh words by Neil Harris in the wake of that um, late, late, late loss at Huddersfield on Saturday afternoon. A logical man might have expected team changes tonight, but I think he might be saving any team changes up for Saturday. I don't know. Or maybe he's going to stick with this, this functional 11, this squad that's failed us on so many occasions. This is Leicester now on the break, coming through the middle. 29 over on the right-hand side. This is... Uh, Ball in from the right side. There's Jules Honeyman. He collects. It's gone for a left-sided corner. The moment where I thought he had it at his feet. Right start, Millwall. Front foot. Dare I say it? Evening skies fading to the dark now. We're at that turning point in the year. Springtime. Floodlights obviously on. But this is Honeyman now to put the ball into the mix on the left side. It's curled in. It's it was curling in at the near post, but headed off the line there by. A, Leicester defender, another ball in from Honeyman, it's into the danger zone, that's gone for a right-sided corner, bit the pressure in the wall, bit of early pressure. Little break on the left side, they score here, we're done for, bravely down Martia Sarkic at the feet of the on-rushing 10 there, listeners. Took a bit of flack for his um, goalkeeping at times this season, but he was bravely down there. There's some statistics doing the rounds earlier on where all of the um, creative statistics, shots on target, passes made, um, creative moments. I don't know what the loose track of what the statistics are, but we're, we're near the bottom of all of them. 23rd, 22nd. Only one we were top of was fouls conceded. So um, it's good to know we can still do some things right, listeners. But that's the story of the season. When you look at the record of this, this shambolic season overall, the... Um, Goals coming from only defenders, you know, the odd midfielder. I think Oberfem was our last forward that scored versus, I think it was Blackburn, that four, five, six games back. The story writes itself, listeners. So no wonder we're in relegation um, dire straits at the moment. But we do have five games to go, that's a poor pass. Bloody hell. Um, we do get it back, thankfully. Jake belts it, belts it into the corner for Honeyman to run onto on the left side. We do, as I say, we do have five games to go and um, five cup finals is, I think, <coughs> the uh, standard, I think, or was it Daily Mail put it today? I, so, um, anything remains possible. Going for a Millwall throw in. Mill defended that well. Crowder into it. It's not a full house, but uh, as always at the den, that don't matter. 18 minutes into the game. Leicester clearly a dangerous side, but we're matching them so far, so all, all, all good. So far. Good to see that the flag's pinned up. I think the, um, was it the Union Jack or was it the England flag? No, it was a Millwall flag that was looking a bit ragged last time I came here. But all the flags are now standing proud in the breeze up there, listeners. A cool night. I did the um, BBC London Sport with Aaron last night. And one of the co-presenters, not Aaron, it was Jamie, I think the guy's name was, asked if we regarded this as a free hit game tonight. I've seen it also described as that by a few people online. Personally, with just five games to go between us and um, the disaster of, of relegation, I don't believe there's such a thing as a free hit, listeners. We've started this pretty well. We're probably, what, 20, 22 minutes, so halfway through the first half. We're in the game. We haven't conceded so far. Um... But no, this is no, no way. Is there, are there any free hits at this stage of the season? It's death or glory now, isn't it? And that's for anyone out there that thinks League One offers some kind of um, opportunity to uh, you know, purify the club, almost, of dead wood. Well, um, I disagree very strongly with you. Disagree very strongly indeed. I think it'd be a disaster, financial disaster. Look at the clubs down there, Burton Albion. Stock balls coming up, I think, from League Two. Crew. Away, away uh, fans of a busload, you know. It's going to be a very, very tough league to get out of. This is Honeyman, though, on the right side, whilst I wax lyrical. This is Longman. Into Leonard. He can't make a run through. We'll do keep possession, though. There's a ball, and that's going to go for a corner. It's a right-sided corner. Nice work, Millwall. 
23 minutes in. I suppose we'd have Leighton Orr in and maybe a Charlton to play. If that raises your spirits, any listeners? Doesn't mind. Anyway, right side of corner, Jill Savile. Jake Cooper's in the mix. There's Ian Fleming. In comes the corner. The referee blows for some infringement of some sort. I've just realised I didn't mention the venue will be tonight, listeners, did I? We are kicking towards the way in, so we will be attacking the Colborough in the second half as per the teachings of the venerable bead at the uh, Jarrow Monastery in the 9th century of Anglo-Saxon England. Millwall shout attack if the your way end in the first half. You first half, he said. That's remiss of me, isn't it? I was too busy slagging off the club for being a shambles. I turned into a shambles myself. Let that be a lesson, Nick. We do without yet more injuries. I just wanted to mention Murray Wallace, who was injured. I, think, I don't know if I mentioned him already. Forgive me if I... <coughs> <clears throat> Forgive me if I have mentioned Murray Wallace already, listeners, but um, he's obviously fractured his back. He did something to his back, you know, he strained it. I did see fractured his back. I don't know if that's over dramatising it online. But a real war horse and a, a real strong servant for our club. I'm hoping that um, whether that's his last appearance from Millwall now, um, who knows what the contractual situation will be, where we'll play, which league we'll be in. I just wanted to say big, um, big thank you, Murray Wallace. We don't know whether we'll see him again. In a Millwall shirt, I mean. He took that knock at Rotherham and tried to carry on, which is incredible, given that he's um, clearly strained his back to a large extent. I mean, I know when I'm out with my back ache, listeners, I won't bore you with my medical medical details too much. All right, then I will. But um, I'm certainly not looking to run around on the football field, put it that way. Nunneman's down, I've been a minute or two now. I'm still, um, still down. Well, he's up, gingerly walking away. Hard man, George Honeyman. Leicester return possession, which is highly sporting of them. Well played, sir. Jamieson, best serve with the crack. I had some Polish vodka on Saturday, which had like a, a blade of grass in it. It's a hallucinogenic substance. Anyway, it comes to this left-sided corner. It's cleared. This is the eight now on the right side. That's to keep in possession a lot, of obviously, listeners. It's the 22. Would you have a go from distance? It's took a deflection. It's gone for a left-sided corner. Yeah, I had some of this... Um, uh, I can't, it was written in Polish. I couldn't... It's vodka with a W. But it was some kind of Polish um, real-deal vodka. My uh, niece's husband is Polish. And I, I swear this stuff had kind of hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic properties, listeners. I had the shakes on Sunday. Long while since I've had the shakes alcoholic withdrawal I don't recommend it not as a lifestyle choice once in a while great work Ryan Leonard over on the left side there great tackle puts it into touch as Leicester are breaking left could hear the applause oh but Fermi ball breaks no one moving in front of him he's got Zian now overlapping on the left side he's making a nice charge down the middle what do we do oh he's tried to tuck it in for Zian Fleming I thought he was going to have a go there listeners there's a moment it's cut inside, really nice work there by Michael Overing, but it's just the wrong decision at the death. He's not shit, that was just the wrong decision. 35 minutes. Can't be shit and make that run, but you can make an error at the end of it, which is what he did. I don't know what kind of shot Oberfem has got on him, actually. He clearly didn't fancy his chances from that distance. He's chasing down well tonight, though. He's just harassed the goalkeeper there, and uh, that's to try and play away. They do now. This is the 21 on the right side. Long ball right to left. Tanganga deals with it, thankfully. Furrow and Leicester on the, on the left side, down by the left side corner flag. Leicester top the table, 40, uh, 79 goals scored this season, listeners, and just 36 conceded. One point clear of Ipswich Town as we speak. Millwall, by contrast, in 20th with just 38 goals scored. So uh, compare and contrast, as they say. Yeah, so Mill statistics in terms of a league table. Goals scored, we're, we're 22nd in the league table of goals scored. 38 goals. I'm not, I'm not telling you anything you don't know already, listeners, but sometimes just to see these numbers reinforces it. Uh, open play goals, 23rd of 20, 24. I suppose only Rotherham are below us in this, this little um, gathering. All four, this is Longman now, takes and turns nicely on the right side. No one in the middle, unfortunately. This was a repeat um, thing at Rotherham and at Huddersfield. But anyway, we're Billy Mitch now inside. It's spread leftwards. This is Danny Mack. This is Jules Honeyman now on the left. What can we do? 
faints his man. That's going to be blocked, unfortunately. It's going to go for a throw-in. Left-sided throw-in, Millwall. Buzz of excitement. The ball's at the Leicester end, dear listeners. It's going to be a Zian long throw. He takes the left side and Ryan Leonard takes the right side. Must be a system to that. There's got to be a system. We're too well a run at club for there not to be a system there, listeners. He takes it short. That's a poor ball back from Josh Honeyman. There's a body goes flying. Referee says no penalty. Jake went flying, no penalty. And I'm imagining he had a sneer on his face when he said that, listeners. No penalty. Yeah. Good tackle there, Jim Fleming. Forces is a break. This is now Ryan Longman. What will he do? He's trying to thread the ball through to Zian Fleming. There's just too many yellow bodies in the way of that ball forwards. Too far out to shoot, clearly. Nicely cut out by Jake as the ball was pushed forward from Leicester. 42 minutes. Ball into the right sided channel. This is over uh, Fleming. Done well to collect that on his own over there, though. It's gone for a throw in. Right sided throw. It's going to be a Ryan Leonard long throw, I think. Jake has gone forwards. It's just over halfway inside the uh, the Leicester half. A long throw from Ryan. Looping up high. Ball finds his way back out to Leonard on the right side. Into the middle. There's Jake Cooper. A header down with no power. Goalkeeper collects. 43 minutes. Easy enough to take, listeners, in all, all honesty. Long throw from Zian then to close the half out, I think. Taken short. Zian now on the uh, left side. Gets the ball floated into the middle. Rolls clear. Ryan then puts it into uh, the high part of the away end. Uh, we'll probably see us out for the half, and there is a half-time whistle. Well, that's not a bad half of football for Millwall listeners. You can hear the applause. I think it's been a good effort. I don't really remember Leicester having any direct chances in front of the goal. Nothing occurs to me. Have a lot of possession, balls backs and forwards in front on our you know area, but we've also had some moments going forward. So good half of football, nil-nil at the break, and um, the referee getting berated, rightly so. Achtung, Mühlwall. Here come Mühlwall for the second half. The listeners, dare I say it? I didn't think that her first half was too bad. Am I breaching any kind of, um, you know, internet uh, norms by saying such things? I don't recall uh, Martia Sarkis having much to do in the first half. A lot of possession, of course. I was just talking to Michael in the, in the half time. He said 69, 70% possession for Leicester, but equally we had a couple of moments. Nothing brilliant, but, you know, it was an okay half. Anyway, here we go now with the second half. Uh, Leicester will be attacking the away end. Mill, of course, attacking the cold blow, as per the Ven the Venerable Bede's instructions at Jarrow all those hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The way we go, dear listeners. Early break, there's Danny surging for us. This is ZM. Danny Mack now on the left side. That's a long cross, it's floating. I think mean, there was an ooh, it was an ooh, but it wasn't really that close to anyone or anything. It just sailed past the, the far post. But anyway, an attacking break down the left side. Not even a minute on the clock of the second half, dear listeners. I suppose the question of substitutions will arise. That's been one of um, Neil Harris's um, areas of concern, really, since his return. He's even made dramatic three- and four-way substitutions on occasion. Or he's left it way too late to make any impact on the game. But um, same as it ever was, I think, as the talking heads once saying. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we're still in the game at the halfway stage of the second half what uh, changes he may or may not make I think there's going to be a danger in keeping this this 11 for too long because they'll be tired and they'll stretch as the game goes along so anyway we'll see we'll see this has certainly been one of his um, foibles doesn't it this is the 25 Leicester breaking on the left now this is a 10 on the left side mill penalty area 25, plays it across the face of the goal. Shot wide. But Honeyman's gone down again, listeners. He took a whack in the face earlier on. Referee saw nothing. Then come the medical duo. 
Tony up, gingerly walking back to the sidelines, accompanied by his medical bouncers. Good applause for him. There'll be more time to be added on the end of the half. We're on 50 minutes at the moment, listeners, but there'll be a few minutes of treatment time there for George Honeyman. Looks like it's going to be a substitution. Looks like he's at SA coming in. Saints alive, listeners. Roman SA is coming in with um, 40 minutes to go. Honeyman coming out. New thinking at the den. Who was that? That was um, Steve Strange visage, wasn't it? New New shapes, new sounds, new roles, new thinking. Did he say that? I don't think he did. Ball breaks. It's over Femi on the halfway line. What can he do? Takes it inside into his man, unfortunately. Great tackle there by Ryan. This is Roman Essay. Goes past one man. Goes past two men on the right side. He's still got the ball. Runs into trouble in the third one, though. No moment there of um, flair. Something not often seen in, in South Bermondsey. Flair. Elan. Elan. To coin the French phrase. Crowd enjoyed it. Elan. Oh, evades Danny Mack. Chance. Block shot. Wow. That was um, a moment there. Danny Mack went for a sliding, uh, diving header, which missed it completely. Almost allowed the Leicester forward through. Hoof clear there by the middle defence. Crowd are into it. A bit of blood and thunder would be nice, listeners. A bit of old school Mill drama. That's what we want. That's what we, we, we yearn for. A bit of red raw meat thrown to the dogs. That's what we're after. Anyway, this is Leicester pressing forwards whilst I try and find colourful metaphors for what we want. In the left side of the corner, Ryan Leonard tackling the, uh, the 11, 19, the 10, 56 minutes. Dewsbury Hall, 22. This sounds like um, the headquarters of a county council to me, Dewsbury Hall. Taken short. Scuffed across to the uh, goal. They do keep possession, though, listeners. So, not quite time to uh, crow. It's going to be a right-sided corner. Bit of pressure for Leicester here, listeners. 58 minutes. In comes a corner, right side. It's hoofed clear by Jake Cooper. Bit of a tangle there, but we do keep it clear. Just to moving the ball around at speed, but so far... Just a cross back and forth the halfway point of our half. Ball breaks. This is Billy Mitch now. He's got Ryan Long on ahead of him. Finds him on the left side. What can Longman do? He takes a shot. One new wheel wall! Shot from Ryan Longman to Brian Crowder! One new wheel wall! <laughs> 59 minutes! What a goal! What a strike! Spectacular! Really nice hit by, by Ryan Long from the left side, top right-hand corner. Let's have a watch of this on the screen. Nice ball from Billy Mitch to find Ryan Longman, uh, Longman on, the, on the left side. He cuts inside, puts it on his right foot. And Bob's your uncle. Bang! Top right-hand corner. Beautiful goal. Beautiful goal. 60 minutes on my watch now, listeners. Let's put the crowd into play. Now we've got to hold our ground here, listeners. Can we do it? Can we do it? Good work, Roman SA, to win the goal kick there. Back rebounded off the 22. Nice work by the boy. Harris was, of course, the manager here when we had that. Uh, immense uh, FA Cup win in nine, 2016. Thanks to the late, late goal from Sean Cummings, of course. The place was uh, exploded with, with noise that night. Great work there by Roman SA. Hoofing it clear under pressure. Couldn't quite compare tonight's events with, um, with that, but it's, it could be just as vital a goal, if not more vital, if we stay up. 
Lovely ball from Zian finding Ryan Longman on left side. He's got Danny Mack overlapping, going to get the cross in, he checks. Comes back on himself, floats into the defender. Unfortunately, there was a moment there where I thought he might better get the cross in. As it is going to be a left-sided throw-in. Nice break down the left. We're pressing towards the halfway point of the second half, 67 minutes. It's been a, <laughs> a good start to the second half. That was a beautiful goal by Ryan Longman. They've given a vital lifeline for Mill in this quest to stay in the championship. So vital for the future of the club to remain in this division next season. And at the moment, with 20, 23 minutes to go, perhaps, and, and then some uh, injury time, some added time, it's working, working their favour. There's a long throw in from Zian. It's back out to Zian on the left side. Gets a nice cross in. It's floated in. Forster's Ryan Lender couldn't quite get hold of that, and Leicester will bring out. Nice, uh, delicate work there by Mill. Coming down the right side. This is Romano say. He finds it. Mark over Femi. It's for a goal. Oh, he shot was straight at the goalkeeper. He pushed, did really well to, to uh, stay on his feet and get a shot away, but the goalkeeper was right in front of him, put it straight to him. 68 minutes. Notable there, listeners, the work from Roman Essay to find that uh, pass for, for Michael Oberfemi. Nice take and turn by Oberfemi. He's not the most natural finisher, he's certainly strong on the ball. He's gone for a throw in over on the right. There was a moment earlier on when he managed to get himself into a clear space, but the shot at the finish was just um, straight at the, at, the, at the goalkeeper. Leicester coming down the left side now. Into the box. Oh, he's headed wilds over. That was a chance. Man free at the far post. Got underneath the cross there. Headed wilds over. 72-72. Vardy coming out. He's done nothing. He reminds me of an old um, Vegas singer well past his years playing his time out on the strip. Possibly with a mob boss running his finances for him. His voice has gone, but he's still... You know, got one or two old numbers he can still do, but his voice is no good anymore. That kind of thing. Ball breaks. This is Zian. Put the ball over the top. It's um, hit the shoulder of Michael Oberfemi, but he's got the ball on the right side. He's got Zian Fleming, uh, Roman Esse, rather, inside him. This is Oberfemi again. Will he have a go? No, he's got Billy Mitch. Move the ball on the right at the moment. Leonard surges past him now. Ball into the box. Trying to find Longman just at the far post, just in front of him, unfortunately. Nice chance. Mill substitution. Looks like Bradshaw's coming in for Michael Oberfemi, dear listeners. Good applause for Michael Oberfemi. They had that chance in the second half to see it. Couldn't, couldn't get it past the goalkeeper, unfortunately. But overall, very, very strong, powerful performance. Good applause for him, as you can hear. This is Leicester. About 82 minutes. Pressing forwards, chance inside the middle half. Great save by Sarkic there, listeners. Blasted shot from the right side. Sarkic got down well for that one, listeners. Coming down the right side again. This is a ball into the box, cleared by Ryan Leonard. Tom Bradshaw takes. Esso clearly, clearly fouled there. The referee gives nothing. He gives it the other way. How is that? How does he give that? I don't know what I'm asking you, listeners. A yellow card, it must be on, on Savile. Free kick Leicester. Mill clear it, a cut tie style. <laughs> Every man for himself, all hands on deck. Ryan Longman, man of the match inside the stadium. I think I'd want to name check Ryan Leonard again. In fairness, I think um, the whole team have done brilliantly well. I mean, obviously, still some time to go, so I won't tempt Lady Fate. Long ball here. This is this is the ten. I think Jay Cooper's done okay tonight. Ball into the box. Skarkic takes. But for the, that goal alone, I suppose, yeah. I mean, Longman will be a very, very strong shout for man in the match. So I won't, I won't dispute the, the match day sponsor's choice there. 87 minutes, perhaps. Be a huge win if we can pull it off. We've just got to keep it tight, listeners. Another substitution. Brooke Norton Cuffey coming in for Ryan Longman, I think. Man of the match, Ryan Longman. 
Looks like Casper de Noor's coming in as well. Leicester spread right. Danny Mack tracking back there. They're still in possession. Dangerous position. Oh, he's off the line! Off the line, Billy Mitchell. Crucial, crucial clearance off the line from a close range header. I don't know how he did that. He managed to get it over the bar. Right sided cross. Leicester can't believe it. I can't believe it, for that matter. Wow. Take your hat, hats off to Billy Mitchell there, listeners. Wow. Anyway, right sided corner. We've got to switch back on again. Hoof clear. The referee has lost the plot out there, listeners. He's given every decision he can to Leicester City. Been a marathon amount of added time. That's down the, down the channel. Balls into the box. Oh, it's headed wide. Wow, from the right side of cross. Bloody hell, listeners. Put wide. Real dodger bullet there. Magnificent support in the den, dear listeners. Crowd baying for the final whistle. Hey! One nil Millwall! What a result! What a performance! Millwallness! Lions find it in the most unpromising of circumstances after those two dire away games. They take it on the top of the table, uh, divisional leaders, and do a job on them. They know Millwall for you, listeners. How many years have I been coming down here now? How many people scripted this? Bloody hell, Millwall. What a performance. Really old crow for you, mate. <laughs> a few, a few goodbye gestures for the Leicester fans. Didn't hear much out of them all game. Wow, what a performance! What a night! Uh, man of the match, yeah, Longman. I think Ryan Leonard. Let's have a look at that goal again. They're just showing it on the big screen. Cuts in from the left, strikes it with his right, and his top right ankle. A beautiful goal. Wow, and that was the separating strike. Brilliant stuff. There it is. Millwall 1, Leicester City 0. Huge step towards salvation. Magnificent. Achtung, Millwall. There we are then, listeners. What a night at the Den. Wonderful performance in the spirit and in the same tradition as the Great Cup runs under Neil Harris. Um, was that 2016? The the wins over Leicester City, the Premier League was at Watford and Bournemouth before that game. And of course, um, the Everton night. It was, you know, in the, in the light of the week that we've had, the shambles at Rotherham and then the... Uh, uh, the, the relinquishment of, of, of three points at Huddersfield. I don't think I was alone. Certainly, when they read through the, the comments online, few people expected the same uh, the same starting 11 last night and very few people might have expected that level of performance. But that's exactly what we got. A um, few moments of, of fortune late in the half. Though there was a couple of um, chances for Leicester to equalise that magnificent goal from Ryan Longman. But, um, you know, not only the Billy Mitchell clearance of the line, which I still, I've watched a couple of times this morning, listeners, I still can't quite make out how he did it, but he did it. And there was a chance for Leicester late where they missed um, from close on another day. Um, that might have gone in, who knows. I wasn't terribly impressed with Leicester. I thought we did a really fantastic job of quieting down one of the leading, if not the leading side in the league. Um had a very Millwall. I think Neil Harris in his post-match conferences, press conferences, said as much. You can't put any any logic to it. It doesn't make sense. As uh, uh, Matt Nash has just texted me literally as I started speaking, saying nothing at Millwall makes any sense. No, it doesn't, Matt. 
Um, and I can't, I can't give any rhyme or reason to it like last night, listeners. Um, as I've said to one or two people, I think it's the reason we love it. You know, um, there's no real logic to it, listeners. I mean, I'm going down in many, many years, like you probably, and you just know that you're going to get um, struggles at clubs like Rotherham, where all um, form and, and all, um, you know, all the numbers, statistics say that we should dominate and we we, we, stayed, we managed to trip over our own shoelaces there. And then give us a big night in front of the leading team in the division and lo and behold, it's so very Millwall to produce a fighting performance like that last night um, and prevail. Um, if it ever makes sense, maybe that'll be the day we stop going, listeners, I don't know. We do have loads of content for you, loads of voicemail content. I'm going to try and get as much into this show as I can do, and then I may have to follow up with a part two. Um, so anyway, let's begin. Let's begin with Bill Slack. Big thank you, Bill. Big thank you to everyone that's contributed, but it'd be Bill to start us off. Hello, Nick. It's, it's Bill Slack calling in after, um, uh, which is the, the most unexpected but expected result in in recent Millwall history. I mean, I, I'm up and down like always draws. I, I, I just do not know what, what's going on. Um, I think there's um, there's a modern saying that the kids say called gaslighting. And um, and I do feel gaslit by this squad of players at, at the minute. Um, after my voicemail at, at the weekend, I, I mean, I was absolutely convinced. No one could convince me otherwise that we were going down after the, the, the performances against Huddersfield and Rotherham. And I don't think anybody can blame me for that. And then we turn in a performance that you would have to say you would probably enjoy watching most weeks if we could consistently do that. And we've not added any players to the squad. He's not really changed the style. I think what happened last night is that um, Ryan Longman found um, a, a, a little bit of form. I mean, I mean, even the goal aside... Um, I think he, he was better than the majority of players against Huddersfield as well, funnily enough. But what I think happened last night is George Honeyman got injured and Romain Essay came on. And Romain Essay, when, when the board went up and I saw Romain was coming on, I, I, I said to my boy that I, I don't think this is the game for him. I don't think he's going to fit into this style. I don't think he's going to get up and down and work hard enough in... in in a system that Neil Harris has set up. Um, but but fuck me, um, he was absolutely fantastic. He was a, a, an absolute breath of fresh air. And there is a lesson there. Um, there is a place for grafters in our team. There is a place for players that just get up and down and tackle and break up play. But we can't have 10 of them out, out, outfield. We need someone who, who, who can create, who excites you, who gets you off your arse. Um, that that that's what we've always had as as Millwall squads. We've had them, them grafters and them and them hard workers and and who do the ugly stuff. But fuck me, surely we deserve now and then to to watch a a footballer or two who who, who gets you off your seat. Who you just absolutely love watching where there's a, a bit of a buzz when he gets the ball at his feet. Romain Esso should be starting. He's ready now. Um, he he might be eighteen, but. He showed what he could do against a, a team that, that really have got a Premier League squad. So, Neil Harris, you have got a pair of balls the size of Bermondsey to pick an unchanged 11. Um, you've got a unanimous bollocking from, from everybody on Twitter, uh, all, all across the forums. Um, but but you, you stuck to what you believed and, and you got a result that is about as Big in Mill, recent Millwall history as I can remember. Just just incredible. Just absolutely um, incredible. I'm not going to talk about next week or last week. That three points, it, it just cannot be underestimated what that's done for us. So well done, Neil Harris, after a, a really rough um, week or two. Um, and, and well done, the squad. Um yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, what a club this is to support. Um, I'll speak to you soon, mate. Take care. Ta-da. Well said, Bill. Um, in many ways, I think you've said everything that I have said in this show so far. 
wanted to say, and I, I dare say I haven't listened to most of the of the voice notes as yet. I, I, I listen to them as I edit them into the into the show, listeners. But I dare say you're saying what everyone else is going to say, Bill, because I think we're all collectively um, bewildered <laughs> by the, uh, the 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 performance in in a good way. I mean, you know, I, 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 nobody. I really hope nobody enjoys what, or to reinforce their own viewpoint, nobody enjoys watching Mill fail. Um, the starting eleven last night, I must admit, it took me aback. I, I, I thought, what shall I say when I'm sitting there? You know, as the teams are coming out, um, and it's easy to get snarky. Um, I suppose you've got to express some surprise at the, as you so rightly put it there, Bill, the, the sheer balls required to name an unchanged starting eleven in the wake of some fairly harsh words in the press. You know, I, I listened to um, Neil's words, I think it might have been the BBC, um, you know, talking about players that don't seem to care enough. I can't remember how he phrased it exactly now as I'm talking, listeners. But it was, you know, it was words to the effect of, he was looking for more effort. And it all, I mean, the, the implication right down the middle, like like South End runs down the middle of your stick of rock, said that there were going to be team changes. But to name a starting eleven, it was unchanged, and then draw the heat as 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 you rightly put out, Bill. I mean, I I don't think I'd be that brave, listeners. I'm going to be really honest with you. I like to think I'm a brave bloke, but you know, until you're tested in under fire, as I say, you don't really know whether you're brave or or, or a coward. Um, I don't know if I would have made that call. So hats off to, to Neil Harris. Um, I'm sure Ramon Essay is going to get mentioned repeatedly across these messages, listeners, but I'm just going to take this chance to um, to second what Bill said there. I mean, he is ready to start. The, the difference the boy made when he came, I keep calling him boy, he's a man. That was a man's performance last night because um, there's always this debate between um, water carrying players and and flare players. It's as old as the the game itself. Um, but Roman Essay, of course, he's a flare player. We've seen seen that. We've seen it in little flashes when he has taken the field previously. Um, but we saw it last night. Um, the craft to you know to to work with with Michael Oberfemi um, was there for all to see and. The, but he also got back and did the work part, listeners. That's that's the thing, isn't it? Flair players tend not to be blokes that tackle back. You know, I mean, it's it's like I say, it's it's a cliche, it's a stereotype. But last night, you were probably watching the same things as I was certainly sat in there in Birdshit Corner, watching Roman say tackle back, defend, fight for every 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 blade of grass in front of him, and. If he's not ready now, Neil, if you're listening, I don't know if you listen to the show or anyone from the club that can tell Neil, he's, the boy is ready. As, as Bill has said, he showed it last night. He was a dramatic change in the, what was a fighting, if functional performance up until that point started, we started to take control. And yeah, it is wonderful um, to be lifted out of your seat by, by talent, um, especially when that talent's prepared to do the work part as well. Um, yeah, uh, great, great message there from, from Bill. Um, I, I feel gaslit too, mate. I like that choice. Um, let's have a listen now to Vinny in Block 2. Big thank you, Vinny. Hello, Nick. Uh, Vinny Block 2. Just walking down the Alderton Road after that game. Uh, what can I say? It's just complete opposite to what we saw the last two away games. Just everyone full. Um, man, Leonard, what a player he is. What a player. Um, kept that left winger quiet most of the game. Um, just so composed. Uh, fair play to Cooper. He's coming in for a little shit over the last couple of weeks. Um, that block towards the end. And Billy Mitch, shall we kept that out off the line? I don't know. Um, just a big shout out to my boy Harry. Just as Longman was running towards the goal, he said, I don't like Longmore. Then bang, top bins. Um, hopefully, with this decent performance the weekend, that could see us safe. Coming you lines. Yeah, big shout out to Harry. Um, I don't think you're alone there, mate, in not liking Longmore. Um, I think that you know you weren't alone in that in that judgment. I think it's the inconsistency we've seen it across the team, listeners, and Ryan Longman probably um, sums it up. He does have something, doesn't he? Um, and last night was his night, and whether he can reproduce that again Saturday because we've got another game looming Saturday against Cardiff. It's going to be remains to be seen. We certainly give ourselves a wonderful base, and it was a wonderful goal. I mean, the he's done that previously. I can't remember who he scored against. He's curled one in from the edge of the penalty area. He's got a good strike on him, 
and you know he's, he's he looks and probably feels like a, a, a Millwall player to be honest in that sense of he's got something special but he don't produce it often and consistently enough but this show is not the one to to slate Ryan Longman um, I thought he did very very well last night it was a beautiful goal. I've watched it a few times since and I might even watch it again after this this record because it, it was a wonderful um, work of art um, make your right in about um, Ryan Leonard possible man in the match out I mean Ryan Longman got it got it in the stadium and probably for the goal alone it was just such a special special hit um, but Ryan Leonard is um, you know I know he's had he's been plagued with injury all of his mill career certainly but so as long as he remains fit and as long as he's on the field, you know you've always got a chance with Ryan Longman and those that kind of power that he brings to the side. Um, Billy Mitch, I mean, where that where that clearance off the line came from. And also, I think it's probably worth um, just mentioning, I think others may well put this into their messages, but it was Billy Mitchell, backwards Billy, as, as do people call him. I don't call him that, but that's what people call him. Back past Billy. Um, was forward past Billy last night because he fed Ryan Longman in, and gave him that chance down the left that was hit so sweetly into the net. Um, and Jake Cooper, yeah, as as you say, Vin. I mean, the, you know, he's taken a lot of shite on online, and you know, um, question marks. I think we've questioned him on this show. I don't think we're uh, we weren't out of um out of line to do so either because um, you know, performances are, are what you talk about the next day and. You get what you, you you know your performance generates what the um what the reaction is going to be, but last night's performance was excellent by Jake. More of that Jake. That's the Jake of old. And um, if we can tap into that again, going on from here, then we'll have a very very good chance now of survival. The win last night has taken us up to sixteenth, I think it is. Let's have a quick check of that before I put that into the show. Seventeenth. We're uh, forty seven points. We're now four. Points clear of Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield, both on 43. Sheffield's in the re relegation spot after last night's games, at least. 42 games gone, 43 points for them. And we are now 47. It's a massive win last night. I mean, I know we've gone to Rotherham and Huddersfield and fallen flat on our face. But um, to produce that that measure of performance and, and win at home to Leicester City, who are still on top of the table, at the moment, um, it's magnificent, wonderful, wonderful stuff. A great night at the den. I mean, you know, th these are the nights you live for. This is what you, this is what you you pine for as a Millwall fan. I was trying to explain this to my wife, who's always incredibly interested in my um, thoughts on on the, uh, the the kind of role of Millwall in life generally. And um, we've never been a great league side, have we, listeners? But um, we do love one-off cup moments. It is what we what we what, what we're here for. I think and last night was exactly that kind of thing. Um, but we've got we've got plenty of bodies now between us and Sheffield Wednesday. We've got Blackburn, Stoke, Plymouth, Huddersfield, and then the relegation spot with Sheffield. At the moment, we've still got um, four games to go. Another win, I think. We can beat Cardiff. Dare I say this to you, listeners? We beat Cardiff Saturday. It's probably within our grasp. But salvation. Next up, let's go with um, let's go with Steve Morton. Big thank you, Steve, for sending your message in, mate. Morning, Nick. Well, the morning after the night before. Steve Morton here from Sunny Bolton, uh, just on my way up to work in the northeast, and I couldn't wait to leave you a voicemail today about last night's result. Absolutely fantastic. God knows how I got to sleep last night. I was absolutely buzzing. Um, and look, big thank you to Bomber and all the team. They absolutely played their hearts out for us. Uh, to make up for uh, that bit of a disaster at Huddersfield on uh, Saturday. Um, I have to say, look, if nothing else, he's come under a lot of criticism, Bomber, since Saturday. But, um, Jesus, he's turned round our home form. Just everybody just think how bad we've been at home for the last year and a half, if not two years. Um, and just never look like the Millwall uh, team that we know and love that just won't be brushed aside and Bombers brought that back, what is it, 10 points out of 12, absolutely fantastic and long may that continue, Saturday's huge, if we can get another win against Cardiff, um, we should be in a really strong position, so uh, wow, what and what a goal Longman, I'll be honest, I was in the hate brigade, I don't mind him as a player like some do, I thought it was a bit of a poor half from him, defensively okay but attacking, 
him and bloody Longman were giving the ball away. Um, Longman and uh, um, uh, Honeyman giving the ball away time and time again. But work rates there, and we, we do say, put the effort in and we'll support you. And then what an absolute strike that was. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll probably repeat what everybody else would say, but Billy's head are off the line. Again, I'm a Billy fan, other than he is a little negative with some of his passing. But wow, the way he, he doesn't just end up on the line, he gets back onto the line to make that clearance. That was as good as a goal. Fantastic. Um, Ryan Leonard, Jesus, what can you say about Ryan Leonard? Absolutely outstanding again. Man of the match for me. Um, and player of the season without shadow of a doubt. Um, and I have to say, there's a few haters on, but I think Obafemi, give him his due, putting a shift in, working his nuts off. He frightens defenders with his pace and aggression and hold up play. Could be a little better, obviously, but he's certainly decent. Just can't put the ball in the net. And it was such a shame he couldn't score that when he was put through by SA. Um, but other than that, I thought he had a good game and he's looking sharp for us now. And then finally, what a substitution. SA came on. Best performance from him, I think, uh, so far, both attacking and defensively. And uh, long may that continue. Um, yeah, listen, overall, well done, the boys. Well done, Bomber. Absolutely delighted for him. Um, roll on Saturday. More of the same, please. And... Um, over to Bobby T. Come on, Bobby. Cheer us all up with some lovely, positive texts and voicemails. We can't wait to hear from you. So uh, come on, you Lions. And thanks, Nick. Keep up the good work. Speak soon. Bye now. Exuberant stuff there from Steve up there in sunny Bolton. Well done, Steve. I, I enjoyed that message, mate. I do make you right about um, the return to feeling like Millwall. I mean, it, when, when Neil Harris returned, first of all, recently... Um, we had that bit of fears. We, we pulled off a few fighting wins. And I started to to think, I think I might have said in one of the shows, it's really nice to feel like you're going back down Millwall. Because that, that sense of um, Millwallness, that was the word, um, that Millwallness had, had left us. Um, last night, put that to, 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 to bed, I think. Um, can we do it consistently is going to be the question. It was a magnificent show last night. And I want to say a big thank you to... Um, to Neil Harris for for that. I know that we were all um, at sixes and sevens. I was certainly at sixes and sevens and eights on Saturday when I was watching on the mobile phone. Three three part sheets to the wind. Um, Over film is a good call actually. Before before we we close out this show, I'm going to close it out with Bobby T. As as per Steve's request, we, we, I'm not um, Tony Blackburn. I won't do requests, but I do have a message from Bobby T. So we will play it out as 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 Steve has asked. Um, but Obafemi, just want to mention him before we go to Bobby and, and close out for this this edition. Um, yeah, really strong players, getting stronger and stronger each game. I think if he was a better finisher, Steve, he probably wouldn't be at Millwall. Um, but really strong on the ball. I would not want to take the man on in a physical struggle. And, you know, he, he showed that last night. His willingness to to run and to be to be powerful on the ball. Um, hopefully, if he can combine with with the um, you know the new the new the new talent is he new talent still is is our talent Roman S. I'm going to hope that Neil Harris picks him on a regular basis going forward for the remainder of the season because I think that's where match winning will lie. And if he can build an understanding with Obafemi, then if he's free and if he if he fits our our budget and I don't know the ins and outs of any of that. But I would like to see Obafemi remain if, if if we can retain him next season, especially if we can start to build something with, with Romano. So that would be a winning combination for a club of our our standing in this in this championship. But Steve's asked for Bobby T. Do you want to hear Bobby T, listeners? Of course you do. I'm going to close the edition, this edition, with um, the cult figure that is Bobby T. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's contributed stuff. I'm going to do a part two. I'm going to do that later on. I'm going to take a bit of a break now. I'm going to do part two this evening. Um, but for now, um, let's go with Bobby T. Thanks for listening, dear listeners. Until the next edition, Arriva Dirty Millwall. Nick Hart, Bobby T here. I have no energy. I have no life. I, I was in tears. I'm lost without Millwall. Oh, my fucking God. Give Longman 
a hundred percent, a hundred or twenty year contract. One hit wonder. Fuck me. The guy's on drugs. I don't care what you say. And he's drug tested. Oh my god. What a win. I reckon that's it now. Harrison in out shake it all about. Who gives a fuck, mate? Every single player. That was a mill performance. Yeah, Harris, whatever he picked. I don't care. SA should start every game now. I don't care. Billy Mitchell off the line. I'm going home happy. Bobby T signing off. Mill are staying up. Fuck them all. Love Nick Hart and the um, Achan Millwall. Bye for now. Going home happy. Oh my God! What a fucking goal! Achtung. Millwall.